No Man's Land, also known as The Green Fields of France, or Willie McBride, is a song written in 1976 by Scottish folk singer-songwriter Eric Bogle, reflecting on the grave of a young man who died in World War I. Its chorus refers to two famous pieces of military music, The Last Post, and The Flowers of the Forest. Its melody, its refrain, Did they beat the drum slowly, did they play the fife lowly? And elements of its subject matter, a young man cut down in his prime, are similar to those of Streets of Laredo, a North American cowboy ballad whose origins can be traced back to an 18th century English ballad called The Unfortunate Rake and the Irish ballad Lock Hospital. In 2009, Eric told an audience in Weymouth that he'd read about a girl who had been presented with a copy of the song by then Prime Minister Tony Blair, who called it his favorite anti war poem. According to Eric, the framed copy of the poem credited him, but stated that he had been killed in World War I. It's a song that was written about the military cemeteries in Flanders and northern France. In 1976, my wife and I went to three or four of these military cemeteries and saw all the young soldiers buried there. <laughs> Identity of Willie McBride According to the song, the gravestone of the soldier, Willie McBride, says he was 19 years old when he died in 1916. According to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, there were eight soldiers named William McBride, and a further six listed as W. McBride, who died in France or Belgium during the First World War but none matches the soldier in the song. Two William McBrides, and one W. McBride died in 1916, but one is commemorated in the Teepville Memorial and has no gravestone. The other two are buried in the Orthuil Military Cemetery, but one was aged 21 and the age of the other is unknown. All three were from Irish regiments. Pete Chellens, coordinator of the In Flanders Fields Museum in Ypres, Belgium, and organizer of yearly peace concerts in Flanders, once checked all 1,700,000 names that are registered with the Commonwealth War Commission. He found no fewer than ten privates William McBride. Three of these William McBrides fell in 1916, two were members of an Irish regiment, the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers, and died more or less in the same spot during the Battle of the Somme in 1916. One was 21, the other 19 years old. The 19-year-old Private William McBride is buried in the Orthuil Military Cemetery, near Albert and Beaumont Hamill, where the Inniskillen Fusiliers were deployed as part of the 29th Division. The 19-year-old Private William McBride can be found at Grave A36, near the back of the cemetery. An Armagh historian Trevor Geary, has traced the Willie McBride to Roan Cottage, Lisley in South County Armagh. This was based on the gravestone at Isle Military Cemetery. The name might have also been inspired by the naval pseudonym of Godfrey Herbert, the captain of the Royal Navy, also nicknamed Baralong Herbert due to infamous Baralong incidents. He was referred to as Captain William McBride through the war by the British Admiralty and other authorities when mentioning the commander of the Baralong, to prevent any retaliation from the Germans should they reveal his identity upon capture. Bogle himself has stated that he had no particular soldier in mind in choosing the name. Willie McBride. McBride was simply a convenient rhyme for graveside, and he also wanted to give the soldier an Irish name as a counter to the anti Irish sentiment prevalent in Britain at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Cover versions and recordings The song, as The Green Fields of France was a huge success for the Fury Brothers and Davy Arthur in the 1980s in Ireland and beyond. The melody and words vary somewhat from the Eric Bogle original with some of the Scots phrases replaced e.g. did the rifle fire o'er ye is often replaced by did they play the death march. It was also recorded by Dropkick Murphys, who changed the lyrics only slightly. 
Eric Bogle has repeatedly stated that his own favorite recording of the song is by John McDermott. Filmmaker Pete Robertson used the Dropkick Murphys version in his 2008 short film The Greenfields of France. In 2014, the Royal British Legion commissioned Joss Stone and Jeff Beck to record the official 2014 Poppy Appeal single Poppy Appeal Song. They chose No Man's Land. The end result was two recordings and a video set against the backdrop of the Tower of London focusing on the poppies in the moat installation. Cover versions include Angelic Upstarts 1986, on the album Power of the Press Assonance 2000, in a Czech version Zeline Francuske Plorne The Green Fields of France on the album Alison Gross Attila the Stockbroker 1987 Alex Beaton 1995 on the album The Water Is Wide Claire Bowditch Tim Rogers and Gautier 2007 Jake Burns on his album Drinkin Again Neil Byrne and Ryan Kelly of Celtic Thunder as No Man's Land on the album Acoustically Irish Celtic Tenors 2002 on the album So Strong Celtic Thunder 2009 as The Green Fields of France on the album Take Me Home The Chieftains The Clancy Brothers Liam Clancy The Corries Donovan 1980 on the album Neutronica Dropkick Murphys 2005 as The Green Fields of France on the album The Warriors Code Slim Dusty, on his album The Man Who Steadies the Lead as No Man's Land. Bob Dylan Oiskefjurat, of Sweden, can be said to have made two covers, one borrowing the melody but changing the lyrics, the other borrowing the theme but changing the tune and most details. The Fenians 1999, on their album Band of Rogues Eric Fish, in the German version by Hannes Wader Tommy Fleming the Furies and Davy Arthur 1979, as The Green Fields of France on the album The Green Fields of France Glengarry Boys 1999, as Willie McBride on the album Home Again Golden Bough as Green Fields of France on their album Golden Bough Kathy Hampson's Free Elastic Band Priscilla Herdman 1982, on the album Forgotten Dreams the High Kings 2010 on the album Memory Lane as Green Fields of France and 2016 on the album Grace and Glory The Horton Weavers The Irish Tenors on Ellis Island as The Green Fields of France Ian McIntosh 1976 on the album Live in Glasgow Robert Marr 2011 on his album Celticism John McDermott 1993 on the album Battlefields of Green The Men They Couldn't Hang 1984 as The Green Fields of France This version reached number 1 in the UK indie singles chart The Merry Wives of Windsor 2007 on the album Tales from Windsor's Tavern as Green Fields of France Moke 2011 on the album Till Death Do Us Part Theatre Tour North Sea Gas 2010 on the album Spirit of the Banished Off Kilter 2005 on the album Kick It Pele 1992 as The Green Fields of France on the album Fireworks Peter Paul and Mary 1990 as No Man's Land on the album Flowers and Stones Plethon in a Welsh translation Gwaedrudwilo Blood on their hands. Prussian Blue, 2005, as Green Fields of France, on the album The Path We Chose. Renault, 2009, in a French version. Willie McBride, on the album Molly Malone, Ballade Irlandaise. Saga. John Schumann and the Vagabond Crew, 2008, on the album Behind the Lines. Sons of Maxwell, 1996, as. The Green Fields of France Stiff Little Fingers Stockton's Wing 1978 as No Man's Land 
On the album Stockton's Wing. Joss Stone, Feet. Jeff Beck, Poppy Appeal, 2014. Ian Stewart Donaldson and Stigger, 1991, as Green Fields of France on the album Patriotic Ballads. June Tabor, 1977, as No Man's Land, The Flowers O' the Forest, with the later song as an instrumental fade out of the former on the album Ashes and Diamonds and on folk anthology Hannes Wader, 1980, in a German version. Assist and Der Zeit. Charlie Zam 1997, on the album Festival Favorites Blackthorn on the album First Light Daniel and Even Duo 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Joss Stone cover A cover of No Man's Land by Joss Stone featuring Jeff Beck was produced as the official Poppy Appeal single for the Royal British Legion. The end result was two recordings, one being a radio edit, and a video set against the backdrop of the Tower of London focusing on the poppies in the moat installation. The cover differed greatly from the original, mainly in that it contained only the lyrics from the first two and a half verses and so omitted the material that contained the anti-war sentiment underlying the song. There were several objections to this version of the song from individuals and organizations on such grounds as the version sanitizes the anti-war message and gives the impression of a false history. It insults the writer of the song and ultimately the people in the armed forces. Bogle himself wrote a piece on the controversy for the Guardian website. He said that whilst he didn't approve of the dropping of verses and the rock and roll arrangement in Stone's version, he acknowledged that the latter was a matter of personal preference and that to do it acoustically and include all four verses and choruses would have made the song nearly seven minutes long and of doubtful commercial appeal in today's music market." And that the broader appeal of Stone's recording would bring the song to the attention of people who would never have heard it before. He expressed the view that the cover version, "...certainly doesn't glorify war, but it doesn't condemn it either." It's sentimentalizing perhaps, trivializing even, but not glorifying." He concluded that neither he nor his publisher would be taking legal action against those involved with the cover, and that, "...I would have wished for a version of my song that could have been truer to my original intentions in writing it, illustrating the utter waste of war while paying tribute to the courage and sacrifice of those brave young men who fought." But if Joss's cover touches a heart or two here and there and makes some people reflect, perhaps for the first time, on the true price of war, then her version will have a measure of validity and value. See also List of anti-war songs And the band played Waltzing Matilda Streets of Laredo